This is Matthew Cratter's Bitcoin University, and today I wanted to correct some common Bitcoin misconceptions. What follows is a text thread between two people that I know, and I was part of this text thread. Both of these people are highly educated, successful, quite well off, etc. I wanted to work through it with you here because I think that will help to shed some light on common misconceptions about Bitcoin, and you may be seeing and hearing some of the same things in your personal lives as we see Bitcoin trading around $100,000 and thus coming on a lot of people's radar once again. So the text thread begins like this. Uh, the first person says, by the way, Bitcoin just hit 100,000. Second person texts, saw it, missed that boat. Don't invest in business models I don't, I don't understand. XYZ's caregiver told my wife she's up 50%, somewhat reminiscent of shoeshine men with stock tips in 1929, obviously referring to the stock market bubble of the 1920s and the 1929 stock market crash. The question here, did this person actually miss the boat? The real question is, when is the best time to exit a weak currency and enter a stronger currency. The best time really is yesterday, as they say about planting a tree. The second best time is today. Holders of the Turkish Lira understand this concept quite well. At what point should you take profits on your U.S. dollars, your U.S. dollar trade or investment, and move them back into Turkish Lira? It looked like in late 2018 it was a good idea to do this as the Lira began to strengthen against the dollar. But these things are very difficult to time. And if we take a look at what was really happening here, as this chart moves up, we are experiencing, we're showing US dollar strength. As the chart moves down, we're showing Turkish Lira strength. And the US dollar is just, just structurally a much better and stronger currency than the Turkish Lira. And we can see that this is basically a one-way chart. And I think the Bitcoin US dollar chart is very similar. So I don't think anyone has missed the boat with Bitcoin. $100,000 Bitcoin is just a marker on the journey. But the chart of Bitcoin against fiat currencies is really going to look like this forever. It's never too late to swap a weak currency for a strong currency. Also, when this person says, I don't invest in business models, I don't understand, I don't think Bitcoin really is a business model or a business. It's best understood, I think, as a monetary protocol, a protocol for money. Bitcoin is not a business. It's not a corporation. It's not a centralized project. It's really more akin to an internet protocol like TCP IP. And that in itself should get you really, really curious and excited about, about investing in Bitcoin, I think. Would you have been interested, you have to ask yourself, would you have been interested if you could have profited by investing in an internet protocol like TCP IP or some of the email protocols? The thing is, once protocols get embedded in the system, they have a tendency to stick around for a very, very long period of time, even if they're not completely optimal. And who knows if TCP IP is optimal. It's not really my area of expertise, but it's not something that's going to be pulled out of the internet stack anytime soon because the entire internet would collapse. And I think Bitcoin has this similar advantage. Bitcoin's not going away. So the sooner you understand its quote unquote business model, the better. This is not something that you can ignore. People have been ignoring Bitcoin for the past 15 years. And I think it's a really big mistake. And the fact that we see Bitcoin again on the front burner should tell you something. The second person said that the uh, it basically implied that Bitcoin is in some sort of bubble here, somewhat reminiscent of shoeshine men with stocking tips, with giving stock tips in 1929. This was one of the ways that various investors had the idea to get out of the stock market when the taxi driver or shoeshine boy was giving them investment advice. But I think what we have with Bitcoin is a completely different situation. Does it look like a bubble? Did the chart of tulips or U.S. stocks ever look anything like this? This is a log chart of Bitcoin. And it really is a one-way train with these four-year cycles and pullbacks. It really looks a lot more like something like Amazon's uh, stock chart than a tulip bubble. The tulip bubble lasted for about a year and it never reinflated. The thing about Bitcoin is we have these crashes, but it keeps coming back. And the third, fourth, the fifth time this happens, you think people would wake up and take notice because this chart looks nothing like this chart. It looks nothing like the chart of the Dow Jones in 1920. 1929, 1930 either. Bitcoin has come back much more quickly than the stock market did. If you're finding this video helpful so far, I just ask you to help to support this channel's mission. Hit the subscribe button. That really does help reach with this channel's reach. Leave a like, leave a comment, question, suggestion for a future video, and share this video with a friend 
or family member. I think there's a lot of cope going on here where each time Bitcoin goes up, people pretend that there's some idiosyncratic reason for it, but the real reason it keeps going up is because it's just a stronger form of money. And it's a stronger form of money because it's neutral, it's decentralized, it's permissionless, it's censorship resistant. You can store it in your brain using 12 words and it is scarce like gold as we're gonna talk about. So if you call it just a speculative bubble back in 2018, and then later in 2020, 2021, you say it's from the COVID checks and the stimulus and zero interest rates. And then now you say it's from the Trump election and lobbying. At some point, you should ask yourself whether you're just assigning random reasons or whether something else is going on. You could have found idiosyncratic reasons why Amazon stock price kept rallying, but the fact remains that it was just a superior corporation. And what it was doing, it was something that people really wanted. They wanted to buy stuff from Amazon or they wanted to use Amazon Web Services. And Bitcoin has similar utility. People want to use it and they're willing to pay to use it. Continuing with the text thread, first person said, I made quite a bit of money in the ETF, the Bitcoin spot ETF this year, and then I chickened out. I think this is a, definitely the fiat perspective. You are not making money when you're accumulating more fiat. You need to measure your wealth in a superior asset and a much better ruler, much better benchmark, which is Bitcoin. Bitcoin is real money. US dollars are just IRS utility tokens. They can be printed to infinity. But this is, of course, just an expression. I made quite a bit of money in the Bitcoin ETF this year, and then I chickened out. But all you have to do is read the political news and economic news, look at the 35 trillion in debt, and suddenly Bitcoin becomes a little more useful. So I think this is a wise comment. The second person responds, I do agree that the days of bills and coins are limited, obviously referring to the rise of digital money. Well, the rise, the days of bills and coins uh, probably ended five or 10 years ago. And now most people are paying with Venmo or Zelle. So we're already in the age of digital money and the, the world wants digital money. The real question is, does the world want digital dollars? Do you want to store your wealth in dollars because they lose their purchasing power over time? And they can also be censored. Uh, you can be debanked, etc. I do agree that the days of bills and coins are limited. I just like to see a basis for what comes next. Well, Bitcoin is the thing that's come next. This is really the thing you need to study. He goes on to say, not that the dollar has a basis since the end of the gold standard, meaning that it's no longer backed by gold. And then the first person responds, the next step is going to be crypto secured by gold. I think this is a common misconception. This would be moving backwards. Why in the world would you want to secure a digital asset with a physical asset, especially since the gold standard failed once already and it was shown that you could cheat. The US, the US printed many more dollars than it had gold to back it. So we all know the problems with the gold standard. So I think this would be a step backwards. I've compared this in the past to people who didn't really understand the car and they thought that a car should be pulled by a horse even though it has an engine instead. The next step is going to be crypto secured by gold. That's definitely not going to happen. But here's what you have to understand. Mining gold is 20 times more difficult than mining Bitcoin. I'm not sure that's true. It's certainly much more environmentally destructive, these giant gold mines, whereas Bitcoin miners are basically just running electricity like data centers, like AI data centers. Uh, but this is something to, I'm not sure exactly how you'd measure difficulty. It's definitely very, very, very difficult to mine Bitcoin if you've ever tried uh, to mine it. And it's become more difficult because it's a global arms race to mine Bitcoin. Uh, the second person responds, hope so something needs to be secured by something. In other words, this person believes that money needs to be backed by something. Of course, the answer to a statement like this is to ask, what was gold secured by? What is gold secured by? What was gold backed by? It used to be global money, and it wasn't backed by anything. It was just backed by, you could say, 79 protons and 79 electrons. Gold really isn't backed by anything else. It's just a widely, or it has been a widely accepted bearer asset which means that if you hold it in your hand, no one can turn it off. You can't be debanked. Someone can put a gun to your head and take your gold, but they can't turn it off in the same way they can turn off a bank account or a brokerage account. So physical gold is an interesting analogy for Bitcoin in that both are bearer assets without counterparty risk if you store them yourself. Of course, if you leave your physical gold in a bank vault, it might get 6102'd as President Roosevelt did to Americans gold. So it's important to hold Bitcoin yourself and it's important to hold physical gold yourself. If you're holding with Goldman Sachs or, 
or, or, or Chase or something, or JP Morgan, you are uh, not doing gold the right way and you don't really understand gold. Likewise, if you're leaving your Bitcoin on Coinbase, you don't really understand Bitcoin. So the point here though, the general point though, is gold isn't backed by something else. Gold is money itself. And what made gold important is money historically where it's physical properties, it's fairly dense, so you can store a lot of value there. It's not like feathers or cotton or something like this. It's also very corrosion resistant, it's scarce, it's widely distributed in the Earth's crust, so it's found in almost every country on Earth. And it was not just its physical properties, but also the social consensus that converged around those physical properties. Those who stored their wealth in copper coins or seashells learned the hard way what it means to be demonetized by harder money, just as holders of US dollars are currently in despair watching what's been happening to Bitcoin over the past 15 years, and especially the past 12 months. The US dollar is being demonetized by Bitcoin, and this is what it means, the appreciating exchange rate. Gold bugs have been learning the same lesson for the past decade as Bitcoin has been demonetizing gold. And if we scroll out here, we can see how bad the damage has been. And Peter, people like Peter Schiff, who've been uh, bad-mouthing Bitcoin and pushing gold instead, uh, should have quite a bit to answer for to people who listen to them. Here's the big problem with backing your money with something else. So for example, US dollars used to be backed by gold. Something backed tokens or money that's backed by something else must always rely on a trusted third party, usually some government entity, to store in custody the underlying asset, the thing that's backing those tokens or backing the money, as well as facilitate redemption. So you need to have someone who can convert the token into the underlying asset and vice versa in a similar way with a spot Bitcoin ETF. We have these conversions going back and forth between the ETF, at least for institutional investors and real Bitcoin. So this is the problem with something back tokens. They have to rely on a trusted third party to store custody and facilitate redemptions. This itself is a huge attack vector. If you want to attack the token, you need only attack the custodian or other centralized third party. If you destroy the third party, the money is no longer backed by that commodity or whatever it is, and then you're in a big in big trouble. The failure of the gold standard and Nixon suspending the US dollar's convertibility into gold, closing the gold window in 1971, is really a perfect example of failure mode for currencies that are backed by something that has to be held by a third party, whether that's a private, a private bank or a government or something like this. Nixon's hand was basically forced because the US had cheated and printed more US dollars than it had gold to back the US dollars that it had printed. If you own something, a something backed token, you need to trust the issuer, in this case, the US government, to keep its promises. And the US failed to do this to France. France sent over a warship with a whole bunch of dollars saying, give us our physical gold and we want to bring it back. And that's really what forced Nixon's hand and he closed the gold window. So if you own a something backed token, in other words, money that's backed by something, you need to trust the issuer, in this case, the US government, to keep its promises. And you also need to trust that the issuer itself will not be pressured by a stronger outside party to do the same thing. So if we had a gold backed cryptocurrency, for example, and it was the gold was sitting in a vault at JP Morgan, all you need to do to destroy that currency is have US Treasury call JP Morgan and or call this custodian of whatever's backing that money and confiscate it. And all of a sudden the money is no longer back. So these are the problems with something backed tokens, the problems with backing your money with something else. You need to trust that even the issuer itself of the money will not be pressured by a stronger outside party to do the same thing trust, trust, trust. This is always the problem. Why in the world would we ever want to reinvent this kind of system that's failed again and again and again? It's much better with Bitcoin where you can verify everything for yourself. You can run a node. You can make sure that what you have is real Bitcoin. It's very cheap and easy to do this. When you hold your own Bitcoin private keys, your Bitcoin is a bare asset like physical gold, cannot be turned off, frozen, or deactivated by anyone. Of course, as we said before, if you leave your Bitcoin on Coinbase, for example, then you have the same counterparty risk problem. When times come, when the time comes, Coinbase may choose not to give you your Bitcoin back uh, or allow you to withdraw it, especially if the US government says that you can't do it. So this is always the problem with bare assets. They should be held yourself. You should not let a third party custodian hold them. There's an advanced point here in terms of, of uh, tokens that are backed by something else. 
when it comes to Bitcoin mining and securing the network, you need a native bearer asset like Bitcoin to pay the Bitcoin miners. If they're being paid in US dollars or physical gold or some sort of fiat, that would be another attack vector where people might try to censor the transactions where the miners were getting paid. But fortunately, they're being paid in the same using the same asset that rides on the network that they are securing. So that's the basic text thread. Uh, I think it's interesting. It addresses a lot of different issues. I also wanted to finish with a warning to people. You may see these bots in the comment section whenever I publish a video, and I try to delete them as quickly as I can, but there are literally hundreds and hundreds of these comments every day. They also do them on previous videos. So I thought this would be a good warning tale. Uh, I like what Ronald McKean uh, posted here. Uh, Thank you, Matthew. Your sensibility is very helpful. And now a confession. First, I'm thoroughly a Bitcoiner, DCA, dollar cost averaging. Unfortunately, I ignored your advice about ship coins. In other words, uh, altcoins, other cryptocurrencies. I decided to be an early investor in XAI. This is some scammy uh, token that may or may not even exist. You see these in the comment sections that are posted by bots. This was a stupid move and I wasted $1,000, which was never returned or refunded. The online help was of course a bot. Twice I tried to move some old XRP that I had left over and was about to transfer it to Bitcoin, but instead chose to use it for XAI. It failed because of a technological error on their part, it was probably intentional, in which they only allocated a total of 10,000 coins from Cardano, ADA, or XRP. The bot stated that it was their fault because the system became quote unquote jammed. They assured me I would be refunded and sent me the address. It failed, no refund, and the bot was unavailable. That by definition was a rug pull. All the advice you've given has turned out to be true, and so I'm dumping everything left over from ship coins, from altcoins at this point, and putting it into Bitcoin finally. Some of us are a little slow. And I responded, very sorry to hear about this happening. I try to delete those stupid bots as quickly as possible, but they're everywhere all over my channel. Thanks for sharing your experience. I will highlight it so others don't make the same mistake. And definitely don't ever send your Bitcoin to anyone else either. Anyone who asks for your recovery seed, your private keys, your mnemonic phrase, or just trying to steal your Bitcoin. If you send your Bitcoin to someone else, expecting them to send you two Bitcoin in return, uh, it's not going to happen. This is really fantasy land. And uh, you wouldn't expect that to happen in fiat world. And it's definitely not going to happen in Bitcoin world. And when you lose your Bitcoin, or if you send it to someone, there's no way to claw it back. It's gone for good. It has settlement finality. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit the subscribe and like buttons. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks all for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.